Welcome to the Italian Unicorn Podcast. This podcast will be short pills about New York City and its greater area. This is an EP, an Italian unicorn in New York area. I move here nine years ago from Italy. Each week, we will visit a different neighborhood and I would like to share my secrets, hints, and suggestions about what to do in the Big Apple. You will discover how and where you can shoot iconic and cinematic pictures and where to eat something good. In each episode, I will share something special, some personal thoughts about the most exciting city in the world. Let's start. And this week, we will roll to Central Park. I spoke briefly about Central Park in episode 2, where I was describing the Upper West Side. But this week, we will have more details about it. It's the most famous park in Manhattan. It divides the Upper West Side from the Upper East. Just to let you know, it's the most visited urban park in all the states. It's delimited by Central Park North and 110th, Central Park South and 59th, Central Park West at the Hay Avenue, and 5th Avenue on the East. It also touched Harlem to the North, Midtown Manhattan to the South, Upper West Side to the West, Check episode 2 of this podcast, the Italian Unicorn Podcast, to discover the area of the Upper West Side. And the Upper East Side to the East, of course. Basically, it's divided into three sections. North End, Mid Park, and South End. He has five visitor centers. Surprisingly, it's not the biggest park of New York City. It's the fifth, after Penham Bay Park, the Staten Island Greenbelt, Van Cortland Park in the Bronx, and flashing Meadows Corona Park in Queens. The park has been described as the first landscape park in the United States. It has natural-looking plantings and landforms, mostly landscape when built during the 1850s and 60s. He has eight lakes and ponds that were created artificially by damming natural seeps and flows. There are several wooded sections, lawns, meadows, and minor grassy areas. There are 21 children's playgrounds and 6.1 miles of drives. It's a walk of three to four hours to complete all the route. The main attractions inside the park are the Ramble and Lake, Hallett Nature Sanctuary, the Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis Reservoir, and Sheep Meadow. There are also many amusement attractions, such as Woman Rink, open from October to April, where you can ice skate, Central Park Carousel, and the Central Park Zoo. The Central Park Mall and Bethesda Terrace and the La Corte Theatre are some of the most iconic places of the park. Here you can find beautiful sceneries, places where to shoot your pictures. The biologically diverse ecosystem has several 
hundred species of flora and fauna. Recreational activities include carriage horse and bicycle tours, bicycling and events. One of the most famous events is Shakespeare in the Park, scheduled during summertime inside the Delacorte Theater. Belvedere Castle and Turtle Pond provide a background for the shows at the Delacorte. As the shows begin in the early evening, usually start in daylight, as the play rolls on, the sun sets and the audience is drawn into the magical action on the stage. If you are lucky to come to New York City during summertime, you can stop by and take beautiful photos of this magic scenery. The park is a natural landscape where to find corners and nice views of the park itself and the city all around. Your shoots will result iconic and so evocative. Who hasn't dreamed to walk in this park for once in a lifetime? Maybe with your lover. Mm-mm, L-O-L, so corny. Such romantic, but corny. Too much, maybe. Historic fact. Do you know that inside the park, there was one of the most wealthy communities of former African-American slaves? It was called Seneca Village but it was dismantled when the property for Central Park was sold. Also, do you know that the park has its own obelisk called Cleopatra's Needle? It was moved from Alexandria in Egypt to New York City in 1881. If you are fond of cinema and TV series, you will surely remember the Central Park has been the background for many, many movies. From Breakfast at Tiffany's to When Harry Met Sally, from Ghostbusters to Home Alone 2. Also, many dead bodies were found during all the seasons Law and Order and Law and Order Special Victim Unit. Pretty creepy, right? During springtime, the blooming is amazingly stunning and the park is colored with pink and white tones of the blooms on the trees. This is a few of the many experiences you can have in the park. There are also sculptures of Balto and Alice in Wonderland. Carriage rides and street artists make the place even more vibrant and magical. Central Park is crossed by a system of roads and walkways and is served by public transportation. It's crossed also by cars. I did it so many times. The park is owned by the New York City Department of Parks and Recreation. Its maintenance is operated by the Central Park Conservancy, a private, non-profit park conservancy. They manage Central Park under a contract with the City of New York and New York City Parks. From the park, you can shoot some of the most beautiful architectural buildings and skyscrapers of the city, such as the Dakota or other famous apartments on Central Park West, such the three-towered masterpiece, the Bersford, the San Remo, San Remo for me because I'm Italian, and the El Dorado. Don't forget to spot also the more modern, super tall structures called pencil towers as Central Park Tower, 53 West, 53, and the infamous 432 Park Ave. This last one became dramatically famous in 2021 because of allegations of defects and complaints by the residents and other controversial facts. This very, very expensive 
an ultra luxury area is called the Billionaire's Row, where very rich and famous celebrities lived as lived or currently live. Try to spot them. To be honest, I haven't been so lucky on this point. Mm-mm. Okay, forget it. On my IG account, any Unicorn77, you can find some pictures I took around Central Park. Also, on YouTube channel of this podcast, you can find and spot some shorts. Our time for this week is over. Please support this podcast, sharing with your friends and family on your social media. Follow the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and other major platforms of podcasting. Stay tuned. See you next week with more info about New York. Thank you again for the support of the Italian Unicorn Podcast. I really appreciate your love.